Welcome to Irva Library District's Yarn Craft Club. Today, we're making Christmas gnomes on our knitting machines. If you're interested in joining us at the library to make your own, sign up for our in-person December dates. You might want to consider signing up for two dates, as this project might exceed our typical two-hour program. If that doesn't work for you, you could always come to one program and reserve your own personal time with the machines and our tools on another day that fits into your schedule. Of course, you are always welcome to use this tutorial whether you are a patron of ours or not. We hope you find these videos fun and helpful wherever you are. I'm going to explain this whole project in its entirety. So, if you've already worked with a knitting machine, some of this information will be familiar. It does include a few tips for working with these machines that I've learned since our original hat making tutorial video. Let's get started. First off, I've discovered the magic of knitting with a silicone earplug. We've got them here for all of our machines, or you can find them at your local grocery stores and online. These cost me about $3.50 for a pack of 12. I take the whole earplug and squish it to stick on the yarn guide so that the yarn will pass over the silicone on its way into the machine. This has been game changing. My research suggests that the silicone reduces static and helps the yarn glide better through the machine. It made yarn that previously didn't agree with my machine run smoothly. Now I use it on every project. It doesn't leave any residue, and the same earplug can be used across many projects. I highly recommend them. Just reshape your silicone after one project and move on to the next. One of the exciting parts of this project is that the body and the hat are knitted continuously as one piece. You won't have to knit a separate hat. One of my coworkers thought of this technique, and I'm thrilled to use it. The tube we are going to knit starts with your chosen body color. I'm using green, but the color possibilities are endless when you think of personalizing these for occasions or holidays. I like to wind my yarn into a cake so that the yarn pulls free and loose from the center. However, as long as the yarn feeds freely into the machine, you can keep your yarn any way you like. Crank your machine until your single white pin is directly in front of the yarn guide. Hold the tail of the yarn in your right hand and the working yarn in your left. Hook the yarn underneath the white pin on your machine. Let the tail drop into the center of the machine. Slowly crank your machine forward and alternate wrapping your working yard behind the next peg, in front of the next, then behind, then in front, and so on until you find yourself back at your starting white pin. Once you find yourself back at the beginning, bringing the working yarn behind the last pin, click the working yarn down to the slot of the yarn guide. Then, slip the working yarn into the middle tension hole. I find that this works for me on most projects, but you can play around with it to find what works for you and your yarn. This happens to be the big twist value from Joann's. Set your yarn somewhere beneath the machine. I often put mine in a bucket underneath the table I'm working on. Reset your counter to zero and begin slowly cranking your machine. It's important to continue pulling yarn free from your skein before it feeds into the machine so that it is not pulling or tugging its way out of the skein. Once you've knitted for a bit and released some of the center tension, you'll be able to crank without stopping to pull more yarn free. After about four or so rounds of slow cranking, you can pick up the pace always making sure that the yarn is running freely into the machine and not tangling. Crank 42 rows of your body color. To change color, make sure your white pin is directly in front of the yarn guide. Cut your green yarn, or whatever you're using for the body, a few inches below your tension guide so that you have at least a six inch tail or so. Drop that tail inside the machine to the left of the white pin. It should remain hooked underneath the white pin. Grab your hat color and lay that tail right next to your previous color's tail to the left of the white pin. Both tails should sit next to each other. Click your new color working yarn down into the yarn guide and slip into the same second tension hole. 
Reset your counter. Hold the two colored tails gently and begin slowly cranking until the color change has passed a few pins on the machine. Crank forward slowly for a few rounds. Once you've passed the color change by three or four rounds, I like to tie my ends off while the project is still on my machine. That way, I don't risk forgetting. Tuck gently on both tails to snug up the stitches around the change. Don't pull too tightly, just snug. I use a few overhand knots and let my tails hang. They will be hidden inside our project. Continue cranking for 115 rows of hat color. When your project becomes long enough to touch your work surface, roll the project up inside the machine and let it hang to prevent the project from dragging on the table. Repeat as necessary. After knitting the hat, it's time to change back to the body color. Make sure the white pin is in front of your yarn guide. Cut your body color yarn so there is at least a 6 inch tail. Like before, pull that yarn out of the tensioner and yarn guide to lay inside the machine to the right of the white pin. Get your body color ready and lay its tail right next to the old color's tail. Clip the new yarn into the yarn guide and into the second tension hole. Also, reset your counter. Hold both yarn tails lightly and crank slowly for a few rows. Like before, after knitting for a few rows, you can tie off your color join ends. Continue knitting the rest of your body for a total of 42 rows. Keep rolling up the inside of your project when it gets too close to the table. Next, leave yourself a long tail. I like to use the measurement of two lengths of the machine. Make sure the white pin is in front of your yarn guide before you cut your yarn. Thread a tapestry needle and we'll start taking the project off the machine. Remove the yarn from the yard guide and lay it inside the machine, making sure that it stays hooked underneath the white pin. Slowly crank forward with no yarn being fed into the machine. Working with the first pin after the white one, push your needle in between the two pink pegs and pop off the loop. Draw your needle and yarn through the loop while being careful not to disturb neighboring pegs. Repeat with the next stitch by picking up the loop wrapped around the next set of pegs in the same way. Continue until you've picked up all stitches and your project is released from the machine. Once you get the hang of the process and you've picked up a few stitches so there isn't as much tension on the machine, you can pick up more than one stitch at once if you feel confident. Once your project is completely separated from your machine, unroll your tube so that the braided side is on the outside and the bumpy looking side is on the inside. Give your tube a good stretch and you might even whack it on the table a few times to get the edges to unroll a little. Now, if you're familiar with hat making on these machines, we're going to sew the edges together just like we're making a hat. Reach inside your tube and pull the other edge back inside. Line up both of the edges so that the tails meet.
you should now have a double layered tube. Pull gently on one of the tails and then the other to create smaller holes. This will bring the stitches we are looking for closer together and make them easier to handle. Thread the tail from the outside edge with a tapestry needle. Unroll the outside edge of your tube so you can locate the vertical looped stitches that appear to all hang on one cord of yarn. Find the first vertical stitch to the left of your tail's starting point and pick up that stitch by sending your needle behind that post. Be careful not to split through the middle of the yarn. Pick up the whole stitch. Otherwise, cinching the opening closed will be difficult. Draw your yarn through. Now, switching to the inside edge of your project, find the first vertical stitch to the left of the inside edge's tail. And pick up that stitch too. Continue picking up stitches in this manner, alternating between a stitch from the outside edge and a stitch from the inside edge, until you get all the way back around to the tails where you started. When you become comfortable identifying which stitches you are looking for, you can pick up more than one at once to speed the process up a little. Just remember to alternate between the outside and inside edges. When you make it all the way around to your starting point, I like to trim my tails down a bit. I leave a good six inches or so still attached. Then, take turns tugging on each tail to cinch up the hole. Don't pull so tightly that you snap your yarn, but try to firmly coax the yarn along so that your hole closes as small as possible. Once you're satisfied, you can trim the tails again and tie a few good overhand knots to secure. Thread both tails onto a tapestry needle and insert the needle as close to your knot as possible and send the needle in between the two layers of fabric. Poke the needle out anywhere, trim the tail, and stretch the hat to hide the yarn in the layers. And now you have what looks to be an extra long hat. Open the hat and set it upright on the table so you can begin filling the inside. First, fill a sandwich sized Ziploc bag with beans, rice, or like us, we used a combination of the two. You could also use small pebbles or those vase filler marbles. Squeeze as much air out of the bag as you can and place the closed bag inside the hat and settle it at the very bottom. Then begin adding stuffing. 
We used polyfill until your gnome is well stuffed up to the hat color. For this example, that means the red portion of our hat won't be filled with stuffing. We used about two ounces of stuffing. Once your gnome body is filled to your liking, lay it on its side and thread a long piece of body color yarn on a tapestry needle. I was able to use one of the scraps I had from cinching up the hat after taking it off the machine. I used a wide, loose stitch starting along the seam where the colors joined, making sure I made my first stitch where I wanted the back of my gnome to be. When you get all the way back around, tie an overhand knot and pull tight to cinch the body closed. You'll likely need to hold the project snug while you push down the stuffing inside to make sure it all remains below the seam. Once all the stuffing is below the seam and your project is snugged up tight, tie remaining knots to secure. Thread a tapestry needle and hide your ends inside your project. Now you can set your gnome upright and fold the hat down over the body and turn up the brim. Here's what everything should look like so far. Now we'll start making the beard. You'll need eight regular bundles of 24 strands and three braided bundles for the beard. To make the regular bundles, wrap your beard color lengthwise around a ruler 12 times. Hold the yarn firmly in place at one end of the ruler, nip off the tail, and slide a pair of scissors underneath all the strands at the other end. Snip through the end of the bundle. Don't let go of the other end of the ruler. Carefully slide out the ruler and immediately tie a knot in the folded end. You've completed one regular bundle. We'll need seven more of these. For the braided sections, wrap your beard color yarn around a ruler in the same fashion as the regular bundles, but only nine times. Snip the tail of your yarn. Add your accent color and wrap for an additional three times. Snip the accent color tail and just like before, hold your yarn firmly around the ruler at one end Slide a pair of scissors underneath the strands and down to the bottom at the other end and snip through all of the ends. Continue holding your yarn at the other end and carefully slide out the ruler and immediately tie a knot. Secure your bundle to make the braid. I used a piece of painter's tape against my work surface. Separate the bundle into three equal parts and braid. Use a small rubber band to secure at the end. I got these in the hair accessories department at my local supermarket. It doesn't matter what color it is, we will either cover it up or snip it out for the final project.
Make two more of these. Once you have all of your bundles ready, thread a tapestry needle with a long strand of the body color. I accidentally used the beard color here. It's not a big deal, but since you'll be tying it around the body, using the body color will make the process less visible. Uh, it will all still be hidden underneath the hat. Punch the needle straight through the knots of the beard bundles in a repeating pattern of two straight bundles and one braid. I've been using a plastic needle for this project, and it works great for everything but this part. I recommend getting a still large-eyed needle, but a sharper needle to work through the knots. Once all of the bundles are snug, arrange them as close to the center of the strand as you can. Gather the ends of the beard and use another small rubber band to secure. This will also be hidden in the end. Bring back your gnome to lay in front of you and place the beard. I placed it right on top of the hat band and I'll tuck it underneath after it's secure. Flip the gnome around and tie the beard strands together. Hide the beard knots under the hat brim. Thread the ends onto a tapestry needle and hide the ends. I also wrapped my ends around a few body stitches just so the beard would be a little more secure. Plug in your hot glue gun and we'll work on the nose. Crumple up a roughly 12 inch by 12 inch piece of paper. I used leftover packing paper, but you could use absolutely anything from newspaper to tissue paper. Squish the paper into a ball of whatever size you like. You can tear off chunks of paper to make the ball smaller as you go if you find it's too big. Using your chosen nose color, hold the tail against the paper ball and begin winding the nose color around the ball to cover it. Rotate the ball in different directions as you go. Once all of the paper is hidden, you can cut your tail and use a tapestry needle to thread the end and sink it in the ball to hide it. I wrapped the tail around a few strands of yarn before hiding it in the ball. Place your nose on your gnome to get a feel for your desired placement. Use a dab of hot glue to secure. Set your gnome aside and we've come to the last step, the pom-pom for the hat. I used the pom-pom makers we got off of Amazon, but you can use whatever method you like. To use the pom-pom maker, grab your yarn color of choice Open one set of wings on one side of the machine, hold the tail of the yarn in place, and begin wrapping the working yarn around both sets of wings. Completely fill the wings with yarn so that the U-shape disappears. I alternated between my main color and a few wraps of an accent color for my palm. The more evenly you wind the yarn, the more symmetrical your palm will be. Once you've loaded the wings up with yarn, close them back into the machine. This will hold all of the strands in place. Snip your tail. Repeat this process with the other set of wings on the tool. When the tool is full, grab a nice sharp pair of scissors and lay the edge of your scissors in the groove between the wings on the wheel. Snip apart all of those yarn strands all the way around the tool. 
My tool started to pop open before I was finished, so perhaps learn from me and don't fill your wings quite as full as I did. Normally, this next step is to cut a long strand of yarn, maybe 24 inches or so, and slide the center of the strand in the slot between the wings. Pull it all the way around the tool and tie a tight knot. I usually flip it back around and tie a knot in the other side too before tying a few more knots for good measure. Leave the tails long. This is when your machine is supposed to come apart. Separate the two halves of the tool and your palm should pop out. Yours will look nicer than mine if it manages to stay on the tool the whole time. Grab your scissors and give it a trim to your liking. Bring your gnome back into the picture and we're going to use those long palm tails to cinch up the top of the hat. Thread one of the palm tails onto a tapestry needle. And starting at the front of the hat, dip the needle in and out around the top outer edge of the hat. Try to go through both layers of fabric with nice wide stitches. Stop when you reach the back of the hat and leave the tail long. Thread the other palm tail onto the needle and repeat this process on the other edge of the hat. Tie an overhead knot with the two tails at the back of the hat and pull tight to cinch closed. The palm should pop right into place. Tie a few more knots to secure and thread your tapestry needle with the tails to hide inside your project. Now we've just got a little finishing to do on the beard. You can trim the beard ends a bit now if you desire. Then, using more of the beard color yarn, wrap it several times around the rubber band at the base of the beard. When the band is covered to your liking, cut the tail and tie the two tails together at the back of the beard. Trim the ends to blend in with the beard. If you see any rubber bands from the braids showing through, you can snip them out. And there you have it, Earlville Library District's Knitting Machine Christmas Gnome. Remember, for December 2022, we are offering two opportunities to come and knit these up with us in person. Well, I suppose there's technically three opportunities, but we do recommend you sign up for two classes because this might be one of our longer projects. If you can't make it to one of our classes, feel free to give us a call and reserve our knitting machines to use in our conference room if you'd like to bring your own yarn. We have stuffing, pom-pom makers, and other tools to share. You can even borrow our tablet to watch this video at the library while you craft. Once again, we hope this video is fun to watch wherever you are. Check out our website at earlvillelibrary.org so you'll always know what we're up to. Thanks for watching!